I was hanging around with two of my brother's friends and my brother, and we were all in high school. It was January. For some reason, we got on the topic about haunted and local legends around our area. There was one specific place we would all call one of the most evil places in the county, Hell's Funnel, over in Strasburg, over on Sides Mill Road. It was a small sawmill with a pond, horse stables, and a shack Boy Scouts had been around the pond a while back. It was surrounded by stories of tragedy and murder. But I'll get back to that soon enough. Ethan, one of my brother's friends, then had the idea that we should visit the mill at night and go ghost hunting. We all agreed because we had nothing better to do on a Saturday night since back in the early 2000s, Lancaster looked way more country than it does now. Humam, one of the friends, had a 1990s Jeep Cherokee that was green and we all got into it and we set out around 10 p.m. because, you know, that was, that was late for us. On the way there, they were telling me stories of a man who had a hook for a hand that would come after you there. A lady in white that might as well have been a banshee. And of course, demons. Back then, the internet was so young, so you really couldn't look up any of these tales or anything for the real story. You would have to do more research and books, and as teenagers, we're not doing that. So really, you had to trust what your friends said about the legend. They also told me about how all the trees on the road would curve in towards the road, like the evil itself was pulling the life away from the trees. This tale seemed like it was real. When going in and looking out the window of the car, I remember thinking the trees were doing exactly that. The car lights were really the only thing we had for light along with a spotlight. We went in a circle around the property, first shining the spotlight everywhere we thought would have a ghost. Nothing happened. So we decided to park on the dirt road leading to the house. Humam put on his high beams after he parked so we could have some light to use when walking around. The only accessible place of the house was the basement which was all just dirt and support beams. And we saw nothing spooky and only a couple of soda cans people used to honestly smoke some weed out of. All of us then walked around the property where we had light from the car. And we heard nothing but silence and saw nothing that you wouldn't see during the day. So all of us decided to leave, circling around the property one more time just for fun. And that's when I saw it. When we went back around the house, we put a spotlight on the window of the basement. There we saw a red cloth, as if someone was wearing a red robe in the basement looking at us from the window. The car sped up and we got the hell out of there as fast as we could. There is no way we wouldn't have seen anyone around there lurking before that scene. Another tale I heard from my friend, and on his account of going there when he was around 8 years old. He lives around a half a mile or less from the site. Apparently his uncle convinced him to come camp throughout the night there and tell him ghost stories. He told me that they set up camp at night and his uncle put on the car lights to help him see what he was doing with the tent. My friend stayed back and watched because as an 8 year old you don't know how to put up a tent usually. But as his uncle was setting up a hand from the dark came out and grabbed him, scaring him to death, screaming for his uncle, and when he looked back, there was nothing. He told me that him and his uncle still ended up camping there for the rest of the night, but without any sleep at all. But for the rest of that night, he heard nothing.
And like any other legend, it comes with more than one story. In this legend, well, at least the first legend, was about Aldous Sides in the early 1900s. He was said to have owned the grist mill and would work constantly without rest. One morning, he made a careless mistake and had one of his hands taken by the mill's water wheel blades. Since phones were not around very much in that time and neighbors were very scarce and there weren't any hospitals close by, he had to run from the remote location to try and make it back to his own house to seek help from his wife. But the wife had no way of helping him due to the severity of his wound, witnessing to the death of her husband on the front porch. Since then, the property has been said to have held home to the ghosts of this tale. One of a lady in a white gown wandering around the side of the pond or above the pond. Some would say it's the wife looking for her husband's ghost, but will scratch you if you get close to the pond at night. Another tells of a man with a hook for a hand hangs around the pond, sitting there with a mournful expression and looking for something lost. Those who would go near the water would be scratched by him because he yearned to communicate with the living. And in the second tale, this is the one I know gave it the name Hell's Funnel. So the term Hell's Funnel actually didn't get its name from the previous story. It was from another grisly tale I was told by locals of Strasbourg. They tell that one man working in the sawmill accidentally slipped and had his hand cut off by the table saw he was working with. But the man in this story didn't die from his injury. He recovers and then goes back to work, only to be let go from his job since not having a hand made him more of a liability. Enraged, the man came back one day with an axe and murdered every worker in the sawmill. With the deaths of the workers, it is said that the souls of all of them created a funnel towards hell, and that is why it became haunted with all different spirits. Next comes another tale about the area of the Hatchet Man, about a killer spirit who attacked people at the site. Legend was, if you approached the area, he would materialize, gripping the axe with his hand, and would slash at whoever is there. He was also said to hide under the bridge and wait until unsuspected travelers would come, kill them, and then cannibalize them. Some also tell of a blue light resonating from the building. And it's also said that if you go in the building, the doors would vanish, trapping whoever in a maze of darkness forever. In another case, a group of people were walking around the pond and heard something behind them to turn around and find nothing, only to turn around again to see a small paper sailboat in the water of the pond. Back in the early 2000s, Ryan Hurdler visited the site and ended up capturing these two pictures while driving away when he saw the woman in white in his rearview mirror. And in another picture he captured, you can see her in the window of the mill. So what is the truth behind all these tales? What actually happened? Well, there is actually some truth that you can dig up and find about the mill and what actually happened. And just to let you know, it's just as scary. In 1727, there was a mill located in that area. Then in 1792, it was replaced with a stone structure next to the miller's house where that at the time was new that the mill would be attached to the house. 
Then in 1850, the porch was made by Benjamin Gonder, and he was the owner of the mill at the time. And we will get to him in another video because he has another haunting story linked to him. The mill changed owners many times over the years until it was sold to Aldous Sides in 1903. So the original story that I told you in this video about Aldous Sides is kind of true. And it does have him in it and he was actually a real person. And Aldous had his son Frank who would do routine maintenance on the structure until November 1935. In the morning, he went to fix a belt on the hoist. This would be the last task he would ever do to the mill because his clothes ended up getting caught on the water wheel blades, mauling his body to death. His left arm and both legs were torn off and mangled his body till it was no longer recognizable. Two locals by the name Lester Winters and Ellis Younginger, who were coming in to do business with the mill, found his body later in the morning. But the worst part about this was that Frank's brother Charles, two weeks prior, died the same way he did. The mill then closed in 1936 with Frank's wife, who ended up then running a gift shop in the square of Strasbourg. And you might be asking, what about today? Is it still abandoned? Is it still sitting there haunting people as they come at night? Well, no. The mill was left there abandoned and had another owner, but never did anything to it. And they just owned the land. They then ended up selling the property in 2009 to a new owner who still own it today. And they renovated the house. And here's a picture of it. As you can see, it's looking beautiful. But the owners have claimed never have seen any ghosts or spirits in their time there. So maybe repurposing the house gave the ghosts their peace and they could move on. Well folks, thanks for tuning in to this video. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And if you like this video, give it a like button. And hit the notification button when you want to see videos when I post them. And like always, I'll see you on the next video.